You guys get tired of this from work because I've been here for five years. You know, our response, we just continue to do the same thing we've been doing. You know, we got this big fight this weekend. We've got a couple more to announce, you know, probably the week after the fight. And we just we respond to the rumors and the speculation by continuing to be the leaders in the sport. That's what we do. You mentioned that Showtime is going to do a $20 million game, and UFC has never done that game. That was it. Was that in response to Dana White's comments? No, it's a I mean, no. I mean, look, we know we know who Dana is. He's always, you know, he's very intelligent, very witty, very classy, and really articulate representative of his company. Um, no, I wouldn't respond to that. I'm just stating facts. I mean, he can certainly give his personal opinion of me whenever he wants, and he feels free to do that. But the facts are the facts are. You know, we all know in the business what the game for September 16th was, and there's a reason why they didn't put it out. And we know what kind of game we're going to do this week. So the reality is we're doing $20 million games. To put it in perspective, UFC has never done a $20 million game. Maybe one day they will. Maybe someday they'll figure out how to do it. But they haven't yet, and we do it with regularity. You mentioned September 16th, and Dana said that they are going to go on Mexican Independence Day. Now, do you foresee a Showtime card in Las Vegas on Mexican Independence Day with Daniel Canelo traditionally? Say, say, say. If, save that quote for next September 16th. Um, now, if they have T-Mobile, what are the other options? Save the quote for next September 16th. Exactly. We'll Crawford, Canelo, and... Yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll see. Let's, let's circle back on that conversation, you know, somewhere around July, August of 2020. Final question um, for me. You talked about the success that Showtime is at. What are some of the challenges that boxing and the boxing industry is facing right now? That maybe a suggestion that you have that the industry really needs to be looking at going forward. Well, look, it, it's it's no secret. I mean, there's a the, uh, lack of organization, a lack of uh, collaboration across the industry. We've got, you know, it's it's not really a cohesive unit. It's a bunch of loosely affiliated promoters, each running their own business. Um, you know, the simple solution would be obviously. Um, if they all work together under one umbrella, I don't know that that's realistic at any point. But I think what is probably more realistic is, you know, hopefully we are transitioning to a new generation of leadership within the sport. Um, you know, nothing against the old leadership, but, they, you know, it, there are some ways in which they really hampered the growth of the sport. And hopefully with the new generation of leadership, um, you know, we'll get back to operating on sound business principles collaboration and the ability to do big fights and growing the sport rather than sort of infighting and, and you know, trying to match